impact societies, very volatile. Wise leaders understand this, so they are very careful to pretend that they care. But not childish ideologues. Childish ideologues just laugh in the face of your suffering. Here's Jennifer Granholm, for example, our new energy secretary, snickering about rising gas prices. What is the Granholm plan to increase oil production in America? <laughs> oh my God. That is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. Doing something to save middle-class Americans from rising energy prices, quote, that is hilarious, says the energy secretary. You can just imagine Louis XVI talking like this right before the French Revolution. It does make you wonder how long this can continue. Candace Owens is the host of Candace on The Daily Wire, and we're grateful to have her now. Candace, great to see you. So they are intentionally making things worse because tearing down what we have is a prerequisite to building utopia. I, I think that is the answer to what we're seeing. That's exactly correct, and this is an especially sensitive topic for me today because I spent the earlier part of the day speaking to a, a North Korean defector, and I, I was actually horrified hearing her speak about what she lived through while she was in North Korea and understanding that you know, what they're really trying to do right here in America is build exactly that model where the state controls and owns and operates everything. You will have nothing and you will be happy because you will have served some higher purpose, some higher government, some higher idea, which you're talking about, these ideologues, some higher idea, green new energy, you did it for your planet, you need to have nothing, you need to shut down these pipelines, you're not going to be able to afford to fill up gas, but look at you, you should be proud because now this is a part of the green new plan. And by the way, if you want anything, you've got to worship government. This is the whole reason why when you talk about what is the thing that connects attack of the education system why are they dumbing down kids why are they being so horrible about families why do they want parents why do they want children turning to government and not to their parents for answers well one thing that ties this all is that they don't want there to be anything but the state in your individual lives in fact one of the things that this North Korean defector told me was that there was no concept of love right she said we don't we don't have words like stress we don't have words like social justice uh, it, 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 in Korean. She's like, there's no concept of this in the state because they don't want you to even think about that because you're supposed to know that this is how things are supposed to be. Every movie that they're allowed to watch in North Korea, and this really terrified me, the only concept of anybody dying is for the state. The highest honor is for the state. We're seeing right now, people thought this was a radical concept years ago. This is a Republican talking point. It's not. We are seeing America being radically transformed into a communist country. That is what is happening right now. People need to wake up to this sector. I cannot say enough because it's happening quickly. How have they done it? They needed an existential crisis. Well, COVID-19 is their never-ending existential crisis. This is why we have to take everything that you own. This is why we have to shut down your businesses. This is why you can't earn a living while we take trillions for ourselves because we're here to help. No, we're not. We're here to take over every aspect of your lives and welcome you to a socialist reverie. It just feels like the cost of this is getting really high. You can feel underneath, I mean, there are a lot of signs here without being too specific, but you can kind of feel the society going sideways underneath. I mean, you, you could see actual unrest. That's the last thing anybody wants. Do you think they're aware that they could be putting too much pressure on the population? I think they're aware, but I don't think they're scared. You know, I think this is something that's been going on, going on for a very long time. This didn't begin with Joseph Biden. We know that. You know, Hillary Clinton would have been a person that helped to catalyze this had she have gotten, had she had become our president, but she didn't get that, and they felt like Trump actually stopped their plans. You know, they started this process very slowly, and nobody really was awake to it. I certainly was, and I thought, okay, maybe, maybe we are just trying to do some socially good things. Maybe they are just trying to help everybody out. But then suddenly, when Trump, well, Candace. With all due respect, you beautiful, brilliant lady, I love you. I predicted this over 40 years ago. I have a buddy of mine. We were in the same jujitsu dojo for years, and he can't get over the things I was saying back in the 70s. And God bless my friend Scott, who constantly reminds me that I used to speak about this very thing then and thinks I'm some kind of clairvoyant genius. And of course, I'm not. I'm just somebody who studied history all my life. Since I could read, I read about history. It's always been my favorite subject. There is nothing new under the sun, saith the Lord, and it's true. I always tell people history does not repeat itself. 
It never changes. It just acts out in different places. It acts out the stories of yesterday in various places. But the theme of history never ends. It's the same dynamic that keeps the stars and planets in space. Gravity versus expansion creates equilibrium. Right versus left, Aristotle wrote, all democracies inevitably capitulate to tyranny, either fascism or communism, because they run out of men of virtue. Our society is ruled by pigs because the people have become pigs. Not everyone, but it's a matter of percentages. When you hit critical mass, it comes to an abrupt end. We are at that threshold. So Candace may not have seen this coming a long time ago. She's young. I'm 65. I knew this was coming. I have said for many years, you either remove them or they will remove you and your nation. They will attack your culture. That's what you believe in. Your culture is what and who you pray to. Communists will use everything they can to bifurcate the culture of a free society. They'll, in, they'll in, incorporate Muslims. They'll incorporate foreigners. They'll bring in everything, like taking down a concrete wall. You could use dynamite. You could use chisels and hammers. But they have gone to work for many years now, tearing this country apart. And all the people who sat on their hands and had every reason in the world not to act, not to do anything. And that's why these people that resurrected uh, on January 6th, these people are in dungeons. No habeas corpus, no rights for visitors. They're in dungeons. These people that, that stormed the Capitol on January 6th. This is classic tyranny. Very few people are talking about it because that scared them. They didn't think the right wing had the balls to finally get off their ass and do something, even if it was nothing more than a loud demonstration. If it had been appropriate, there'd have been a lot of people dead that day. Government people. That's a tragedy to say that. But that's the price. All enemies must die, foreign and domestic, if the nation is to survive. That's what General Mealy, Mealy Mouth, didn't understand when he condemned Trump for standing up at St. John's so that the left wing lunatics didn't burn a national church down. And he resented standing there with Trump as if Trump was the problem. Because General Mealy is all in like Colin Powell and the lying Dick Cheney and George Bush attacking Iraq for something they had no part in. But saving and preserving our cities, that's not a priority. You imagine. So I guess enemies foreign, but not domestic. So if your neighbor's house is on fire, you go there and help put the fire out. But if your house is on fire, you walk away. You do and say nothing. Let your family burn to death. That's the, that's the moniker of General Milley and all these left-wingers. We are at war. This is a war. This is a cold civil war that's about to get hot. Many people are about to start dying. The effervescent and bubbling up at the school board levels and the street levels is about to get hot. I want to see how smart these liberals are when people can't feed their families. When there's no food on the shelves, like their utopia in the Soviet Union, and they can't put gas in their car, and they have no money. 
then you know what's going to hit the fan. And all you apathetic people who said, what are you going to do? I don't want to fight the school board. They want to turn my boy into Tinkerbell. But, you know, I want him to get a degree. I want him to get into college. College. The chickens are roosting. They've been home for a long time. We won World War II, and we lost World War II because the element that we brought into this country designed this. We brought these commies here. They graduated from schools like Columbia and started CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System. They were the Facebooks of the 1930s and 40s. And the Googles. The devil has been doing his work since the very first day on this planet. That's not rhetoric or hyperbole. It's fact. This country was the greatest Christian nation in the world. And that's what made it the greatest nation in history. We stuck to our priorities culturally. We were never perfect. We inherited sin from our foreign ancestors, Portuguese, Dutch, German, English, French, and Spaniards, who brought slavery here. No American brought slaves here. We inherited it, a legacy of our European past, which we fought two major wars, 1776 and 1812, to throw off. The revolution wasn't just a war against England, it was a civil war. You had Americans fighting in that war against other Americans. They don't teach you that. And it wasn't divided by a Mason-Dixon line. It went from house to house and street to street, across the 13 colonies, until we kicked those limeys asses out of here. The Revolutionary War Army under Washington was integrated. Blacks fought alongside whites in the North and in the South. And then the Democratic Party grew its evil. Its, its banner was slavery. And they divided us. And the weak, tepid Republicans, or Whigs of the time before Lincoln, tried to go along to get along. And they said things like, well, you know, we don't want to have a problem. And that go-along, get-along created an army in the Union that wasn't integrated. We had to classify slaves as contraband in order to seize them from their rebel overlords and free them. But in doing that, we made a declaration that, in fact, they were property. And Lincoln knew that conundrum. There's no easy way to deal with original sin, right? But this country has tried. We fought a war where 650,000 to 700,000 Americans died in a population of 32 million. You do that statistics, it's pretty incredible. And all those families from the North who lost sons, fathers, brothers, you going to tell me that their ancestors since owe anybody anything? You had families that lost Five sons, like the Bixby family, that Lincoln's favorite letter alludes to. So, this evil, begotten by evil, but the answer isn't to capitulate to a greater tyranny like communism. Wake up, America. You're at war. Like it or not, you are at war. It's a cold war. It's about to get hot. Buck up, arm yourselves, be ready for a fight coming because it's either going to be fought on your terms or theirs, but the fight's coming because it's here.